Hundreds of millions of years old. The Appalachian Mountains are ancient. To us, they appear steadfast, immovable. While, in fact, they are a place in constant transition, where formations, migrations, and transformations create and shape the wilderness. Here, the region's countless species are the life force of Shenandoah National Park. Like salamanders, though seldom seen, the highest diversity of salamander species can be found here in the Appalachian Mountains. Many are found nowhere else on the planet. One such species is the Shenandoah salamander. Rare and secretive, it exists solely on three distinct north-facing mountain slopes, one of the smallest habitat ranges of any animal in the world. Fossil evidence suggests that salamanders have been evolving in their current habitat since the Jurassic period, which dates back over 150 million years. Shenandoah salamanders have no lungs and instead respire directly through their skin. This intriguing adaptation requires exposure to the mountain's moist environments. Despite being studied for many years, it remains mostly mysterious to science. A living reflection of life that can form and evolve alongside a habitat for millennia. It is hard to imagine this vibrant ecosystem not ever being here. But like everything in existence, this place has its own beginning. As we go deeper into the region's underworld, a vast network of caves and caverns are tucked within. Naturally pitch black, when lit, they are windows into deep time. A billion years ago, all of Earth's continental crust was clumped together and formed a supercontinent. For hundreds of millions of years, the plates began to spread apart, creating a new ocean named Iapetus, submerging the land in salt water. The limestone and red clay are evidence of this epic era. The jewel-like chambers are in fact made up of millions of tiny sea creatures that once died and accumulated on the ocean floor. 480 million years ago, tectonic plates again shifted and collided. Ancient rocks were thrust upwards, forming the Appalachian Mountains. The present-day Himalayas offer a sense of the peak's towering appearance soon after formation. For over hundreds of millions of years, erosion has transformed them into the gentle peaks we see today that stretch more than 1,500 miles from Alabama to Newfoundland. The Blue Ridge Mountains are a slice within it, and Shenandoah National Park is a slice within that. And like the mountain range itself, the formation of the park had its own tumultuous beginnings. As the early 20th century unfolded, America was undergoing a period of rapid industrialization and development. But amidst the urban expansion, there were those who recognized the importance of preserving America's natural beauty for future generations. The National Park System was established in 1916 for this very purpose. In 1924, the NPS began the search for an area of stunning beauty that would bring the National Park experience to the East Coast. 
local businessmen jumped at the opportunity to boost tourism and lobbied Congress to choose the majestic Blue Ridge. And in 1926, Congress authorized Shenandoah National Park. However, bringing a new national park to the Blue Ridge Mountains did not come without significant sacrifice. Despite claims of pristine wilderness, the land that would soon become Shenandoah was mostly privately owned and was home to families and their businesses, schools, and churches. The Commonwealth of Virginia condemned the land and purchased it under the eminent domain law. The state purchased 1,088 tracts of land and donated them to the federal government for the creation of the park. Lives were disrupted and families were displaced. Throughout the wilderness, one might find a graveyard, chimney, or other traces of mountain homesteads from a time before the establishment of the park. These relics are reminders of the debt of gratitude the nation owes to those who were impacted. As the Appalachian Mountains continue to evolve and change, so do the ecosystems they forge. The mountains form a natural barrier that forces moist air masses to rise, cool, and release precipitation. Raindrops merge into creeks that merge into streams that merge into rivers that meet the ocean. Combined, it is the Chesapeake Bay watershed and is the largest estuary in the United States. But the watershed's impact is not limited to the peaks and coast. It's interconnected to drastically different environments throughout the world. The mountains are a vital intercontinental corridor for movement between northern and southern ecosystems. Shenandoah National Park serves as a sanctuary for more than 190 species of resident and transient birds. While some do not ever leave this haven, others take refuge here during their brief journeys to higher elevations or distant voyages to the tropics. The peregrine falcon is one of the most agile and awe-inspiring winged migrants. As adults, they are masters of the sky. So good at flying, they mostly hunt other birds that have recorded speeds of over 200 miles per hour, making them the fastest moving animal on the planet. The Appalachian Mountains offer suitable nesting sites with cliffs, rocky outcrops, and forested areas. This fledgling peregrine is 42 days old, and time has come to take its first flight. But for first-time flyers, the cliffs are high, and the gusts of wind strong. Spreading one's wings doesn't always mean flying right away. It's always that first step that is the hardest. Then, airborne, at last. 
Over the next couple of months, it will hone its superior flight skills. Perfecting hunting techniques and learning to ride the currents will eventually be the key to its survival. In the spring, many pollinators come out of hibernation or arrive on northern migrations in need of sustenance. Early blooming plants are crucial for their survival. It's a reciprocal relationship. These animals and plants evolved to impress and attract each other. the monarch butterfly. It's the only butterfly known to make a two-way migration like birds do. But unlike birds, it takes several generations to complete. In the spring, northbound monarchs are not able to survive the entire migration. Instead, they travel for two to six weeks before laying eggs and dying. It takes three generations to return to their northernmost breeding grounds. But the monarchs cannot just stop anywhere to lay their eggs. They need milkweed. The plant is toxic, but not to monarch caterpillars. They have adapted to consume it exclusively. As they feed, they accumulate and store the toxins, making them unappealing to predators. And that carries through to their metamorphosis into adult butterflies. With massive habitat loss and pesticides, relying on a single plant species for survival can present some risks and challenges. For this reason, Monarchs gravitate to places like Big Meadows, a mountain oasis filled with milkweed. The monarchs can thank Native Americans for this sanctuary. It is believed that 10,000 years ago, Native people created a hunting ground by continually clearing the area. To this day, it still lures deer. The name Shenandoah is likely derived from the Native American language Algonquin, pronounced Shend Han Dewey. One translation interprets it as beautiful daughter of the stars. Development and pesticide application continue to contribute to the sharp decline of monarchs making safe havens like these crucial to their survival. Migrations. Some are measured in seasons, like the peregrine falcons. Others in four generations, like the monarchs. Then there is one that can be measured in four decades. Along with their great migration comes one of the most transformative life cycles of any species. the American eel. It's a fish, often misunderstood. Seen here in the clear, cool mountain headwaters of the Rapidan River. 
but they started their journey in waters that could not be more different. They are born in the Sargasso Sea, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. When born, they are microscopic larvae and drift to the mainland via ocean currents. Along the journey, they gradually transform into small transparent glass eels, developing fins and growing about two to three inches long. Upon reaching the coast, the young eels make their way to the mountain headwaters, where they begin the decades-long process of growing into full-sized eels. After 20, 30, or possibly 40 years in the mountains, something has stirred within this eel to swim back to the sea, to the exact place in the Atlantic where it was born. But this catalyst remains unknown. Their eyes enlarge by 10 times. Their fins get larger and larger. Their skin thickens and they change color to silver. They become seaworthy. They travel thousands of miles to the Sargasso Sea. There, they congregate hundreds of feet below the water where they spawn. The eel's life journey ends here, where they die after mating, ending a migratory journey that lasted almost half a century. Deciduous trees that blanket the mountains collectively create the largest and most dramatic transformations from season to season. The seasonal changes in daylight influence plants and animals alike. Buck's antlers start growing in the spring as the days become longer. By fall, the antlers are full grown, just in time for the annual deer rut. As winter's shadow draws closer, a greater sense of urgency looms throughout the forest. Bears are the most legendary winter planners. Food resources become scarce in the winter, so there is a good excuse to gorge oneself. While the good times last, this one is going to great heights to stock up. Black bears are expert climbers and will strip entire vines of wild grapes, which turns out is just what the vines have intended. As the bear moves about the forest, it will spread the vine seeds to far locations as it goes about its business. Eventually, the bear finds itself in a precarious situation. The higher she goes, the thinner the branches. But there's still plenty of grapes. The risk may be worth it. On second thought, maybe not. With a sense of smell seven times stronger than a bloodhound, she'll find more food without risking it any further. Temperatures routinely drop below freezing in winter, causing Appalachian black bears to fall into a state of deep sleep called torpor. Without such biological, 
physiological, or behavioral changes, life in these conditions would not be possible. Survival matters most. But in the natural world, death is not necessarily the final transformation. The process of decomposition creates new beginnings. Without it, new plant growth would be impossible and life on the mountains would be unsustainable. Life comes in many forms, but most always from nutrients and sacrifices of those that came before. This energy that propels life never disappears. It just changes shape. At Shenandoah National Park, we're exposed to a profound, infinite thread that connects the past, present, and future of the Earth. Ages and eras move like a shadow during the day, unnoticeable in the moment. Formations, migrations, transformations, each a step along the winding journey of nature that one day may lead to an understanding of the greatest story of all. Life itself. <laughs>